Hey guys, uh, I'm Daniel Norton, and today we're going to look at a uh, editing session that I did on Twitch last Sunday. So if you don't know, every Sunday on my Twitch channel, I go through some of my photo shoots from the previous week, and we go through, we edit them, we kind of uh, tweak them, do a little bit of retouch, and kind of I talk about my process of like deciding what I want to use, what I don't want to use, and it it's awesome if you guys join me there because then we can have a chat about it, you ask me questions, and we can kind of go from there. So without further ado, let's do it. So here we are. We're looking at uh, the shoot again from Thursday that I did with Adorama. So this was a workshop on sculpting light. So basically, this workshop's all about the idea of we generally teach you like how to make flat, even light fill in the shadows, make it look better, better, right? But in this workshop, I usually... Um, we try to take it the other way and go darker and a little more moody and use shadow in an interesting way. So um, that's kind of where we're going here. So we're going to see the transition as we go through. Let me just open this back up. Oh, I lost my stream here. Oh, man. All right. I think I lost the chat. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I may have lost uh, Amy 500 as well. Ah. Okay, I don't know if like there's a delay. I don't know what's going on. I might be answering people twice here because of the way this is working. So just tell me in the chat if everything crashes <laughs> because I'm not going to watch it because if I do, it's going to uh, be a problem. Anyways, we're in Capture One. This is Capture 120. Um, we're going to, uh, you know, we have 121 images to go through. That's the basic shot. And we're just going to work our way through and edit out uh, the ones that we don't like, and we're going to make some minor adjustments. So the way that I like to do this, as I mentioned before, by the way, I'm going to be very slouchy. This is an odd table soon. Um, is the way that I like to edit these is I like to go, um, I, li I like to remove the ones I don't like versus picking the ones that I do like. Because then in the end, it works out to be the same, but it's just easier for me. Um, all right, so that being the case, I'm going to look over here uh, and I'm gonna select all my images that I made that day. And we're gonna mark them all three stars by hitting the number three. Okay, this will allow us then to basically change the rating on each image to remove it if we want to. So for instance, if I go up here to my search and I go three stars or higher, of course, everything's there, right? But if I hit this first image and I hit a two on it because it's a black frame, now we see there's only 121 images, 120 images because that one's gone. It's not deleted, it's just, you know, not in the selection. Okay, I think I'm seeing the chat now super delayed, so I don't know what to do about that. I apologize. I've had to, oh, hold on, can I jump the stream forward? Yes, I can. There we go. I was watching the, the old part of the stream. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I don't know what's happening. Guys, I'm not sure if I'm caught up or not. It keeps starting over. All right, whatever. I think I'm a little bit behind, guys. So if you're chatting and I'm not getting with you, then that's why. I'm just going to roll with it and maybe it'll eventually catch up. Oh, now I'm seeing a commercial for some reason. Why would I see a commercial? Oh, because I'm in Adorama XP. I do not want that. Twitch. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. I love you, but you're killing me here. Okay, that's me talking to Seth on the text. Okay. I'm not quite caught up yet. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to get to the end so I can actually see questions when they come. All right. I think I'm there now. I can't really tell. We're just going to go for it, like I said. Nope. It keeps stopping on me. Mother effort. Sorry about this, guys. Okay, Twitch app, you're about to go in the trash. And I'm instead of going to watch it in Safari, I'm just going to go on to Twitch and Safari. Are you kidding me? I 
into the code sent by text. Oh man, are you kidding me? Switch to it. All right, sorry guys. I swear half the videos are me trying to make Twitch work. It's like for, for a user-friendly platform, it's not very user-friendly sometimes. Okay. Channel. There we go. Okay. I'm still not sure if I'm watching it live or not. I will wave my hand like this. Okay. I'm assuming it's live. Yep. Aha! Okay, so I'm just a little bit delayed. That's not too bad. Anyways, where was I? So we're going to go through these again, and I'm going to look at them, and we'll make minor tweaks as we go through, and we will get rid of slash keep the ones that we like. So, of course, the first handful of frames are black frames. We're just going to get rid of those by hitting a two next to them. This is just, you know, in the beginning, whenever I'm doing one of these live demos, this is literally me just showing that it's getting rid of all the light in the space. So those first ones were, there's no light in the space. And then this is, look, flash. In terror, clearly a terrible image. All right, so here we like kind of bring a softbox in in the classic position with no fill. It's really a nothing shot. Now I'm filling it in with a reflector. This was not the point of the demo, but it's not a terrible shot, so we'll look at it. It looks a little hot to me. So I'm just gonna come over here to my adjustments. Let's see. Wow, okay, interesting. I'm just gonna grab my mids, I think, and drag them back this way, and my highlights this way, because I always like to do that. Remember, we don't want to flatten stuff too much, but I just want to bring it down a bit. Yeah, just looked a tiny bit hot. Also, we have this weirdness in the corner here. I think I'm just gonna, uh, I mean, I can get rid of it pretty simply by, and normally I wouldn't do this, because I probably would just not keep this shot, but since we're, you know, I want to make a new layer that is a, a healing layer. And I'm going to grab my uh, my brush. Nope, that's my picker. Where's my brush? My brush. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger by using the bracket. And I'm going to paint out what I don't want to be there, which is this corner item. OK. What just happened there? I made an adjustment layer for some reason. That is not what I wanted to do. Let's go back to the heel layer. Let's paint that out, as I just said. Man. So we're going to paint this out. Yeah, it doesn't. This this right here doesn't need to be perfect. It's just against black. So, and I'm going to go like that. That looks good enough to me. It's going to stay for a second until I take my pen off of it, and now we are good to go. Yeah, okay. Perfect. All right, so we can see without that and with it. Nice. So that makes that image usable. I mean, I wouldn't use it, but Erica might, so I'll keep it. Come back over here. Um, I don't know what's going on with this hand right here, so we're going to get rid of that. Uh, you were sitting at your Mac in the studio, yeah, I was. Air quality is bad. Oh, wow. Oh, man, because of the uh, the fires? Jeez. All right, so this one looks a smidge bright, again, like the other one. So I'm just going to come over here, and I'm just going to grab my mids, drag them back, in my blacks. And again, we talked about this before. I don't normally grab the exposure slider unless I need to. You see, I'm using the levels to bring back because I want to have contrast. If I bring my exposure, the whole thing's going to get flat looking. I want to keep the contrast. So what I would, what I did there, we just do that, right? Is we can see that there it looks too bright, and that's mostly because my shadows and my my midtones are, are bright, not because my highlight is. So if I just bring those down, my highlights stayed pretty much where they were, and the image looks good now. I can see that these first few ones, because we're, we're testing a few things, are not going to have a similar exposure, so I'm not copying and pasting exposure like I normally would do. 
I'm just uh, you know going through each one individually. Mm, this one looks okay, but you know even when they look okay, I usually do a little bit of a tweak. So I'm gonna grab my my highlights in. Because remember, by bringing my highlights in, I'm gonna add that three dimensionality by bringing this bright area forward, right? So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna grab our mids and adjust until we like it, which is there. And I always do a little bit of the blacks. If you don't do that, you, ten you tend to get things that look very flat. So it's always good to add just a little bit of the blacks at the end. That one looks pretty good. And looking below it here, I can see this looks pretty similar. So I'm gonna shift command C to copy those adjustments. I'm gonna go down to the next one and I'm just gonna paste those, shift command V. Yeah, that looks good. In fact, it made it a little bit brighter, but I, I actually like it, you know? And, and again, I'm, I'm up here, if I'm looking, I'm making sure I'm not blowing out. You know, 255 would be blown out. Like, even in our eyeballs, I'm not blown out. Maybe like right, right there. So we have detail in our lights, and that looks good to me. Color-wise, it looks good. I decided to shoot this at 5,000 or 4999, which is a little bit cool, uh, you know, on the cooler side than I normally would, but we're messing around. Um, that also works, so. To be honest, I think I like that better. Seth always likes to set the Nikons at 5,000, and he set it up, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go to 5,600. So now, if I wanted to, let's say I like that, and I'm like, oh man, these are too cool now. What I can actually do, and I know that I want them all to be 5,600, I can actually now select everything again, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm gonna go Adjustments, uh, Copy and Apply Adjustments. And I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna uncheck everything except for the white balance. So, because I don't want to apply those light settings, right? So now I'm just going to apply the white balance to all images. And now this should all be warmed up. There we go, right? So that's if you just want to do a single adjustment, that's what I generally do. Um, I am going to now take this and copy this again, just to make sure I have the proper thing copied. And we'll just move our way down. That one looks good. I kind of like it with a little bit more contrast though. You see how that's like punchier? So. I'm gonna apply that. We're actually getting a tighter shot now, getting those darks in, you know. Everything looks good. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I think everything's still working, it looks like it is. So I guess what I've learned here is that I shouldn't watch this on the Twitch app while I'm also running this Link Studio app because it just doesn't. The only downside to this one, guys, is that Erica is pretty perfect, so there's not going to be a whole heck of a lot to do with these. Um, so I'm going to keep applying this setting until I find an issue, where, probably where I change the light. Okay, so here I decided to kick in a little fill. I'm guessing it was probably a silver card. And the reason why I think that is because of this specular highlight. If it was white, I'd be surprised. I'm guessing it was silver. Silver's going to bring in the specular highlight a lot more than the white is. In fact, I think we did it both ways. Is that true? Yep. Yeah, so, I mean, the silver is brighter as well, but also if you look at the specular highlight, you see how it's punchier, even just the lights themselves are brighter. So that's, that's what the silver does versus the white as far as reflector. To be honest, I think, I, I think when I was shooting, I said I like the silver, but I, looking at it now, I think I like the light one better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this silver one, and I'm actually just gonna drop my highlights a smidge. Um, actually, I'm going to paste these first, okay, and I'm going to bring my mids over a little darker, and that looks about right to me, yep, hey, from Germany, how are you guys doing over there? I was supposed to go to Germany this summer, clearly uh, that didn't happen, but, you know, maybe next summer, if they, if they allow us to. Okay, that's fine. I'm not loving the pose though, and she's kind of in a weird like mouth open, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. This is great, you know, when the model is completely in the dark is usually the best shot. I mean, to be honest, there's, there's enough dynamic range though. That doesn't look terrible, but I know it's, I remember right, it's out of focus. Well, not really, just a little bit. Hmm, let me mess with this. There's gunk on my screen, all right. Uh, just for the heck of it, because I feel like it, I'm just going to grab my mids and bring them down a little bit. You might be thinking it's dark, why would I do that? Because what I actually want to do is add contrast. Like, the, what, I'm, what I want to pop is going to be the highlights on her face. So we can see that by bringing down our mids, 
and bring up our highlights, we actually just get that little pop, right? She doesn't, uh, she gets more, she doesn't get brighter. She gets more contrasty, which draws your eye to it. Um, we could definitely come in here um, if we wanted to and make it brighter. I mean, clearly that's, that's easy enough to do. Be like, oh, look, it's bright. But then we're just a flat, boring image, right? Leaving it dark adds a little bit of mystery, I think. Um, let me see, I'm gonna maybe just bring the whites up a smidge. Yeah, that's not bad. See, that, would, that was gonna be a throwaway image, but I just had to mess around. New Jersey. I don't know why, but I've been seeing, okay, so I don't know if you guys see these things on YouTube. Maybe it's, maybe I've finally reached the end of YouTube. This could be it. All of a sudden in my feed, like 80% of the things that pop up are people reacting to music. So it'll be like a bunch of people. It's generally younger people, but not always. Um, and they're listening to music, I guess, for the first time and reacting to it. And apparently, this is a very popular thing because I look at the views on these videos and I'm just like, what? So the reason why I'm bringing this up right now, because that seems like an odd thing, is that like five of them popped in my feed this morning and they were all Bruce Springsteen songs. And of course, you just said New Jersey, so that's what I always think of. Uh, I think of New Jersey and, and I also think of uh, Springsteen rather, and I always think of never get off the highway in New Jersey. It's, it's similar also to Connecticut. If you're driving in New Jersey and you get off the highway, the chance of you getting back on the highway easily is so slim. It's like, why don't they have exits where you can get off and then get right back on? Nope, you get off and then you're like, all right, I have to drive 87 miles in the other direction to find another way to get to this highway because I can't just turn around. I don't know why. Okay, maybe I should do some reacting to music videos. I feel like I, I listen to so much music that I, I would be lying if I did that because I've probably heard, at least on some level, a lot of the music that... Because of course you gotta pick songs that are well known. Like that's the idea, right? The idea is that, what? You've never heard that song before? Can I explain the difference between HDR module and adjusting the highs, mids, and lows in the module below? Sure. Um, so, and I am not a scientist. Basically, actually, in, in order to do this, we'll just we'll we'll do the image two different ways. So, first of all, just like most editing software, there's a million ways to do things. So you could do um, do this in a lot of different ways. What I'm doing is adding contrast, right? I find that the HDR is more about bringing back detail when you've lost it. So that, that, that's when I would use one over the other. So, but you can probably do almost the same thing. So like what I would normally do, let's say I'll do this one first. I'll do it the way I would normally do it, which was levels, is I'm grabbing my, my, um, my lights and I'm bringing them in because what I wanna do is make my lights brighter, right? I wanna add contrast by bringing my bright, my bright slider. And then that also adjusts the mids, that's why I end up messing with that, but I won't mess with it right now. I'll just pull my brights over to where I like them, and then I'm gonna grab my darks and make my darks darker, right? And what that does is that gives a more three-dimensional feel. That's really what I'm going for here. Um, and then I usually, you know, I will adjust my mids slightly as well. So that's kind of the look I'm going for. Now, if I reset this and I wanna do it with the HDR, you know, normally, normally you'd be like trying to recover highlights by going this way, right? But we can actually come in, um, and or I should say by going this way, but we can come in here and actually make them bright, just like I just did. And let's see. But do you see what's happening? The whole image is getting brighter. It's not the same thing as the levels. It, like it, it's a strange, um, actually, let me do the, the whites instead. Let's see what that does. Nope, same thing. It, what I think the HDR stuff does is it tends to flatten the image, which is the opposite of what I'm going for, but I'm still gonna try to do it. So if I bring my lights up really far, and then I drop my blacks, bring my whites up, and I drop my shadows. You know what else it seemed to do, which is interesting and, and weird, is that, um, oh no, okay, that was just my brain. I was like, why does it seem cooler? There we go. Huh. Similar. I don't think I would use it like that. Where I would actually use the HDR if I really, really wanted to, like if I was gonna do the HDR, it would be, let's say, in an image like this, 
where I underexposed it by mistake and I was trying to save it, you know, then I might come into this image and go, I'm actually copying the, <laughs> the, the settings so I can just paste it back after. I could go in here and be like, oh man, this is too dark. Let me break it, make it, uh, you know, let me, let me try to make it brighter by, oh, no, wrong one, by, uh, by bringing up my like shadows and stuff. You know, it's a way to like bring up detail where you don't have it. So that's what I would do with, with this. You know, that's, that's where I would use the HDR. And you can, oh, I mean, I'm also using this. Let me reset this. Oop. And you actually see what it does. It starts, it's better than, okay, so here's what makes HDR good. So let's say we just did that, right? That doesn't look too terrible, right? That looks okay if you like that. Let's reset this one and go, oh man, this is underexposed. Let me just grab the exposure slider. You see the difference? The exposure slider brings everything up in kind of a gentle way. Um, the HDR one makes it a little more punchy. <coughs> Sorry, there's no mute on this mic, by the way, which is the devil. Um, these are the Road Go Labs. Um, and uh, they're just different ways to accomplish a similar thing. I find that you get more control doing it with the levels for my taste, so I usually, plus I want to keep it dark, so. That's the difference, I guess. Hopefully that was, that made sense. But you can do a similar thing, like that doesn't look terrible, you know, I, it's fine. It's not the way I would normally do it. Like I'll do this one the way I would normally do it, which is the le levels. And then we're gonna go to the darks. Oops, that's too much. And then we'll go here. You know, and we have two very similar images done two different ways. The HDR is almost a little bit flatter. And also when you do the levels, for some reason it tends to punch the contrast up, uh, not the contrast, the saturation. So um, the HDR is good, I guess, if you don't wanna mess with the satch. But you can see, you can do similar uh, oh, why am I doing it that way? Let's put them side by side. Yeah, and I'll go up. So that one was done with the HDR stuff, and this one was done with the levels. I mean, they're not the exact same photo, but they're pretty close. So you can see the difference. You be the judge. Uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't talk smack about, oh yeah, no, I talk smack about New Jersey in the sense that the highways are terrible. That is the truth, and she'll probably admit it as well. I'm a Springsteen fan, so that's not smack. Uh, okay, just did that. Oh, hey. Hey, uh, weekend photo, how you doing? Uh, doesn't Vanessa talk smack about, yeah, everybody, everybody from New Jersey Talk smack about Jersey, because that's Jersey is, is is all about smack being talked. It's the Rhode Island of the tri-state area. Oh yeah, F yeah see, Fa I've seen those ones too, father and daughter reacting, which is kind of interesting there. See, it's more believable to me. Because I often think to myself, like, have you really never heard this song before? Like, don't you don't have a radio? Well, maybe people, I, mean, I don't know. Uh, usually does these from the house in the woods. Yes, that is the truth. <laughs> yeah, this is the studio. Oh, hold on, am I not am I not streaming? Oh, hold on. All right, hopefully we're back. <laughs> I'm not sure. Let me know if we're back, guys. Yeah, the, the internet here in Manhattan is the devil. So uh, I apologize there. I think I caught that I'm gone. I'm back, right? All right, yeah. Make sure you shout out if I'm not here. I'm trying to, to watch the chat at the same time and it's, a, it's not easy. It's not easy being green. 
But anyways, hopefully you caught that. Uh, I don't know how long I was off the air. Um, Okay, all right, all right. All right, what I'm gonna do is to hopefully avoid that happening again, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna, uh, maybe I'll try to watch it on my phone instead. I'll, I'll watch the chat on my phone, guys, instead, and, and leave here. Let's see if that works. I don't wanna keep dropping you guys. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I have like a massive, uh, you know, well, massive. I have decent bandwidth at my house, but in the city, it's just it's just the devil. We're back, guys. Oh, there I am. Okay. All right. So I think I'm chatting. Somebody chat so I can see if it's working. How many videos am I going to shoot today? Yay. Okay. Welcome back. Okay. Good. All right. All right. We're going to try to do it this way. Wow, this is very awkward. All right. Yep. Okay. Just let me know if it if it drops, because I can't see it anymore for some reason. Oh, there it is. Okay. Cool. Whew. Well, we lost like ten people. All right, that's okay. I, I understand. I would drop as well if I was. Uh... All right, if I lost it. Okay. So, anyways, um, so we see that that's the difference between basically the HDR and the uh, and using the the levels the way I normally do it. Let's go on to the next one. Yeah, this is not playing out well. Okay. All right, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, we normally shoot like if I'm gonna shoot uh, videos besides this one, of course. Okay, I started buffering back then. Oh man. Okay. Wow. All right. So let me go back to the underexposed image just to explain that, just in case people missed it. Okay, so I showed you like on a regular image how I would try to do the same thing, but let's look at it at the underexposed image because I feel like that's where you would use the HDR first. So looking at uh, the tools that we have, you know, um, at our disposal, it, let's say I looked at this image and it was like, oh man, the flash didn't go off, but I really love this expression and I, this is what I, you know, I want it to look this way. I want it to look more exposed. Looking at it, I could do a few different things. So I'm going to reset this. Actually, I'm just gonna hit Command R. That resets the whole thing. I'll make the white balance though 5600. So we've got a few different things. You could say, "Oh, it's underexposed. Let me grab my exposure slider." Right, and that will work, right? Because as long as your camera has enough dynamic range, you'll be able to bring it back. We can see it's noisy as heck, though. Look how noisy that is, because we're yanking up the shadows that much. But I mean, hey, we're yanking up the shadows almost two stops, so you can't really, you know. Um, that's fine. You know, you could do that, and then of course I would just drop the highlights so that I don't lose detail. Now I'm gonna use HDR, right? to not lose the detail in the highlights in our hair, maybe even the whites. And that's how I would do that, right? The other way to do it would be to come into your HDR and then grab our, uh, sorry, I did the same thing last time. Grab the shadow area, right? Which is because she's basically in shadow and bring it up that way, right? By doing that, you notice that the hair did not blow up because it didn't bring the entire exposure up. It just brought up that part of it. So it's probably still gonna be very noisy because, well, it's less noisy, it looks like. Less noisy, a little more sharp. So to me, that's what the HDR is for. You can use, the, use it for the blacks too and get detail in our hair. You know, underexposed. It still doesn't look great. I mean, you still should get a proper exposure. Um, if, if I was trying to, and I don't think I did this the first time, to fix this using levels, which I wouldn't, uh, I could grab the mids and just yank them up uh, like that. But that's also gonna make things really tremendously flat. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, yeah, it, I wouldn't do it. Like I wouldn't try to save an image with levels. Levels for me is all about adding contrast. So if I have an image like this, that's underexposed, I'm going to use HDR, right? Or possibly the exposure slider, probably HDR. If I'm trying to add contrast to an image, then I will use levels, which I just paste them back on. And that just adds a little punch. Cool. Ah, what's that? Nope. Alrighty. Let's go here. Okay, that's the one I did HDR versus levels. Okay, so now we're down to this one, which the light's starting to get look nicer here. Starting to get better light. It doesn't look like we're buffering anymore. Uh, was I shooting with a Z6? Yep, Z6. Oh, thanks, uh, Diva. Yeah, this, the live ones are always so fun. Um, 
I think Seth gets a little frustrated with the comments, but you know, I don't have to see those comments, so it doesn't frustrate me. Um, I pasted the wrong thing on there because I, I was talking. Um, okay, so again, this one looks fine, right? I mean, I actually, somebody, I can't remember who it was, I should have looked, put a comment on, like I posted this on Facebook, not this one, but like what, about two or three weeks ago, and they were like, wise guy, like, I thought you got it right in camera. I mean, this is pretty right. All we're doing now is really tweaking, right? I want to add a little more contrast, um, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to grab my... Uh, Highlight, uh, my highlight of my levels, and again, I'm just gonna drag it over. And what I'm trying to do here, you can see the face, I'm, I'm adding, your, my whites are starting to pop, right? And we wanna bring this up so that we start to see that reflectiveness of the skin. You know, that's the three dimensionality, that's the texture of the skin, we want that. We bring that up, and then, uh, again, I usually, I, I tweak my mids a bit, usually to make sure I don't blow things out. And then I'm gonna drive over and grab my, my blacks and bring those in, and that gives me a nice three dimensional deep, rich, uh, saturated image. Uh, if you do it too much, so like I said before, you can might want to bring your saturation down a smidge. Um, I might just bring it down one, because she was very tan anyways, so you're gonna start really popping those, uh, those colors. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm gonna copy this, which is uh, Shift-Command-C, right, and we're gonna move down to the next one. <laughs> which is very similar. Okay. How many videos am I going to shoot today? Uh, today I am going to shoot after we're done. I try to shoot, normally when I do onset videos, like the ones that come out on Tuesday, I usually shoot two or three at a time. And of those, I usually keep one or two. Like I, I, I have tons of videos I don't use because either I didn't like the way I explained it or I, you know, it didn't work out exactly how I wanted it. You know, stuff like that. Sometimes I just reshoot stuff. I shoot way more videos than I publish because I feel like, you know, I want to give you guys the best quality. Uh, if I was editing it for print, how would I treat it differently? Um, in this case, I don't really think I would because I'm not doing much to it uh, that would, uh, that would like, I don't mind having no detail in here. If, if you want a detail there, it, you know, in print, you would need to, to obviously bring up your, you'd make, make the image flatter. Uh, and it also has to do with what kind of paper you're on. What you really want to do is, when I go to print something, like I, I get this far in Capture One, and then I would open it up in Photoshop, and I would change the, uh, the color profile uh, back and forth to the paper one and make sure that it doesn't lose, uh, lose detail. You need to know what paper you're using. You need to have your color profiles for your paper, and you need to make sure that your screen is obviously calibrated. And then you get the image where you, where you think you want to do it, and then you preview it. Like if you, um, that's really more of a Photoshop thing. Actually, can you do that in Capture One? I bet you can. Let's look. Nope, apparently not. Maybe you can, but I'll, I'll look it up later. I'm not gonna sit here and look it up. But in Photoshop, there's like a little preview thingy. Uh, and usually I, I usually have mine set for CMYK because normally if I care that much, it's because it's going into a magazine and they usually want CMYK. So you do your, uh, your preview and you switch to it and it'll basically show you, if you're, if you, how it looks, you know, to the, to the best of, that it can. What aspect ratio do I typically shoot? Um, I mean, I shoot the, the, you know, two by three, the regular aspect ratio of the camera. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I mean, it depends, right? Print, photo book, it depends, right? Like, so for instance, if an actor, for, if, if somebody came to me and they were like, hey, I need these for my eight by tens, I'm an actor, what I would do is I would shoot it, I'd, put the, I'd shoot the first frame, I mean, I wouldn't do it, well, I might do it horizontally, I'd put a crop on it, you know, I'd crop it in, let's say to, you know, I'd, I'd crop it in the eight by 10, I don't have this set up properly to show, uh, <clears throat> to show the pixels, but let's say, let's say that's eight by 10, I'm just gonna do it quickly. And that way, as I shot, I would make sure it's framed up properly. So that, that's basically how I would do that. Um, you know, otherwise, I just try to shoot it with the, with, with the best composition that I can achieve in that image. Because 99% of the time, people are just using them you know, on the internet. That's like what most pictures are these days. And they're either going to, to crop it in some weird format that I never thought of, or they're going to leave it the way it is. You know? So uh, I just shoot it in two by three. 
I actually really like the Micro Four Thirds format or Four Three. That was the um, that was the format for. Um, don't really care for that image. Uh, that was the format for like six four five cameras. So for a long time, I shot that way. Um, but I don't like those cameras as much. I don't like the tiny little sensors and the uh, you know there's. I shouldn't say I don't like them. I don't have enough experience to really care for them enough to really know much about Micro Four Thirds. What I've used, they've been fine, but it's always been for like small projects. Uh, I like a bigger sensor if it's like for for a job. You get the proof button on the top right. Oh, the eyeglasses. Is that the only proof button they have though? Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, but how do you set it though? Like I know that, but how do you set the proof? Like what it's um. Oh, do it recipe proofing. Okay, so it's. So it's doing it based on the recipe. That's what I wanted to know. That's what I didn't know. So if you, what you do is you come over here, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, did I save that one, that Adorama one? Yeah. Okay, so Adorama used to have glossy paper <laughs> that you could set the, the print quality for. So if I was doing the... You see how that changed? If I set the Adorama glossy paper, and then I proof to it, um, it changes... The, that's what it looks like when it's being printed. You know, that's basically the. Uh, how do I turn off the proofing now? You got me. It's like stuck in proof mode now. Oh, there we go. Okay. I guess it just stays there when you do that. I didn't realize that. Huh. This I did not know. So basically, um, yeah. This is what it's going to look like printed on that glossy paper. So you would just adjust to it, you know? So if you can, I'm sure you can probably see the difference. Unfortunately, I don't think I can... Like, this is a Photoshop file, so this is a nice clean... This is what I'm working towards, right? Uh, if I'm going to give it to the models, right? That's sRGB, which, you know, for what we're doing, it's not going to uh, change much. The Photoshop file is staying in our Adobe, Adobe RGB, because that's how I shot it, right? Um, in this kind of image, the difference between Adobe RGB and sRGB is not huge, so not an issue for me. But this Adorama print, this changes everything, right? It looks completely different now. Look, look at how like different the blacks look. Look at how all that looks. So you would, you, if you wanted the, your blacks to be super black here, you would leave it in that, and then you would come out here and you would adjust for it. You know, maybe I'd drag them over more. You see how it, see how it changes? That's basically what it's going to look like printed. So if somebody wanted this printed, I would not tweak it the way I just tweaked it. I would do a completely different tweak. That was a good question. Now if I can get it back to where it was. I did not realize that when you were on that, it, uh, it automatically proofed it. That's actually pretty cool. All right. Good questions today. I can't say I ever print directly from from Capture One, I always go through Photoshop first. And maybe this will change. Um, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, right? I mean, so what you could actually do here, right? So this is an easier process for recipes. You could have different stuff set up, you know, whatever you are, like different, uh, if, you know, um, color profiles, which is basically the main thing, and also different sizes. And you can use that then to, to prove stuff out. Okay, it looks like we went with a bit of a darker shot here. Um, oh, I think we were messing around with the color too at some point. Hmm, okay. Let's go back here. So I guess I like that more. I feel like this is a bit flat though, especially since we were doing a, uh, something about sculpting light. I guess we were starting again. So let me see if I can actually get this thing to be. So actually I'm probably gonna use the HDR now. See, look, so look, if I wanna save this one because it's dark, the best way for me to do that is to come over here now and just like draw my shadows up. You know, I can just bring that up a bit. With, as opposed to my exposure. It's just gonna do a better job at it. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll keep that one. But this is the best shot of the entire shoot. Get rid of that. Right, a blue gel. Yeah, we were definitely messing around with the different gels and stuff. That one's out of focus for some reason. There we go. Okay, so here we are. Oh, you know what I did? We did a custom white balance, didn't we? And I just ruined that because I... <laughs> okay, hold on. So, when we were doing the shoot, 
We actually were trying to get, we added a jill, so we did a custom white balance. But earlier, remember, I selected everything and changed everything to 5600, so I definitely didn't want to do that. So um, let's go back to the one right after that one and do that. Nope, that's not going to work either. Okay, so this here I will use as a white balance, and I'll click on it. Okay, so then I'm going to, now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to do what I did before. Remember, I, I clicked on these two. I'm going to go image. Um, adjustments, copy and apply adjustments, and again, I'm just going to do the color, apply. There we go. That should at least get me close to where I was. There we go. Huh. Still looks a little bit warm for me, but that's the one that's out of focus anyway, so I don't think we really care about that. Then I'm just going to copy this one and paste it on the next one. All right, so let me get rid of that. All right, here we are. We're back. I guess we're trying to make the hair light warmer, right, by doing that. I feel like this whole thing's still a smidge warm, so if, to my taste right now, I'm actually gonna make this a little bit cooler. There we go. That looks good to me. The whole thing looks a little flat. And again, a lot of people might look at this and go, that looks dark, which it does look dark. But the reason why it looks dark is because it looks flat. So if I just make it brighter, it's gonna stay flat. What I really wanna do is make it more contrasty, so I'm gonna grab my highlights and you see how I'm doing that when I bring that over the whole thing just starts to feel brighter because it's adding that three-dimensionality to it so I'm gonna pull my whites over and I'll mess up my mids a bit and then I'm gonna come over to my darks and just bring that back into the contrast and you see now it looks better so if I go like this that's where it started with the wrong color and everything and then boom now we're there there we go Clearly, I must have made an adjustment because now it's bright, but I'll still paste the same settings just to see what it looks like. Um, clearly too bright now. So I'll drag this back. I don't know what I did here, but I don't like it as much. <laughs> clearly, I did something I didn't like because it doesn't... Uh... Yeah, I think I just made it too flat. We started getting too flat again. You know, once I, once I go contrasty, it's hard for me to go back to flat. Um, if I double click the Kelvin, it will go back to where you shot it originally. Oh, interesting. Let's try that. Uh, no, it went back. Yeah, it went back to where I shot it originally, but I, I wanted it to go. Yeah. Which is weird because I did a custom white balance. That doesn't make any sense unless I just didn't use the custom white balance. I don't remember not using it, though. I mean, it was so long ago. It was like three days ago or four days ago. Here, here, I'm just bringing down the mids. I can just see that it's too flat. And I think the mids will help me. So I'm just going to bring my mids down. And then, because I'm already looking at the highlights being bright. So I'm just really cranking the mids more to this side. And that looks good to me. And again, each time I'm copying my settings when I make a change, because I'm, I'm assuming that the next frame is going to be similar, like this one is, so I can leave it. Okay, here we change the light, but I'll still paste it first. Okay, interesting. I think here I'm going to actually grab my black. Yeah, there we go. I'll grab the blacks and bring it down a smidge. What's really interesting is like, so you look at Erica's face, right? And we can see that like the shape of her nose and all that stuff. We really want to highlight that, you know? So I'm, I'm trying to get enough shadow pattern here. So when, it, when you look at it from a distance, we really catch that shape, you know? So uh, if it's too flat, you won't see that. It, her face just look flat. And she'll look like she doesn't have a nose. But she does. I know it's weird. People have noses. It's strange. No, I didn't do a custom in the camera. I did a custom in Capture One, which is why it should have stayed. So I don't think that that... Um... Oh, you know what I can probably do? If I click on this one and I go Command-Z... Hold on. Nope, it just, <laughs> I guess the last thing I did was move. So I thought it would do the last thing I did on that image, but it did not. Okay, so I don't know what the original white balance was because we screwed it up. All right, that's okay, that doesn't matter. That's why you save the shot of the target when you do that. And actually, that's why I do it in Capture One and not in the camera, right? 
because by doing it in Capture One, I've say doing it meaning I shot the white card, and I say I did it in Capture One versus doing a custom white balance on the camera because then I have that white card if I ever want to go back, especially if I want to go back on images before. Do I ever use a color temperature meter? Not in years. I mean, I have used them. Um, I used to use them a lot when I did a lot of filtering in camera. I find they're really useful when you do that, but I do so little filtering in camera and they're very expensive, so I never upgraded the one I have and I had, I should say, and I sold it. I went through a period where I sold like all my like lighting and color meters and light meters and, and I basically sold all my lighting. Believe it or not, I, w I had no lighting for like almost a year. It was actually when I was in the studio. Um, I was shooting all natural light. So I like literally, and I, you know, there was, I needed money. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not gonna use this stuff. So I basically got rid of everything. And because of what I was doing too, is I was saving up to get hot lights and I ended up switching all to data lights. And then I felt like I didn't need uh, to use like light meters and color meters and stuff because data lights are so accurate and I was using, you know, it's what you see is what you get, so. Of course, now I still use the data lights and I have a light meter, but not a color meter. Okay, we're gonna paste the settings. Wow, that looks super orange. Okay, we must maybe we, we might have removed the gel at this point. Yeah, something does not look right there. There's like a weird color thing going on. Oh, that's what the weird color thing is. There it is. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm like, something doesn't look right. Because I had pasted the color from previously, and it didn't just paste the temperature, it also pasted a minus 3.3 .3, uh, in tint. So once I get rid of that, that's pretty darn good, I think, right out of the camera, but I might go a little darker. So, or right out of, I should say right with that adjustment. So I'm gonna go a tiny bit darker. And I think I might even pull the lights back a smidge. Yeah. I like that one. It's kind of a classic uh, Erica expression. Like I said, there won't be many here to get rid of. This is the uh, out of focus Laffy shot that I always like to keep. Uh oh, oh no, I did it again. Every once in a while I do this and I put the stuff down here and I have no idea how to put them back. Hold on. Here we go. <laughs> I hate when that happens. All right, back to this. I think there was a debate going on because uh, Vanessa Joy, you you know, she believes that uh, Eric, this is a better way for Erica to look, and I, I like her to look the other way. So we were kind of going back and forth about which way is better, and clearly, I'm right. You know, I mean that goes without saying. You know, but it it goes to show you though that people definitely look different depending on direct direction they look. At. Some people look different the way depending on the direction they look. Uh, I think she looks harder when she looks, uh, I guess it would be to her left, and so camera right, where uh, where she looks softer the other way. So it kind of depends on if you're going for hard or soft. You can double click the Kelvin and go back, uh, do a custom, uh, nice Rembrandt. <laughs> Drag and drop. Oh, I don't know what that means. I'm missing something. Oh, hold on. Color temp meter. Drag and drop. I'm not sure of the connection. When you say color tap for meter, you're talking about a handheld meter, right? I mean, the reason why you would use those, so I guess I'll get deeper into that, because I just said that I, I used to use them and then I don't anymore, that, I, that doesn't really tell you much. So the reason why you would use a color temperature meter, to me anyways, generally, is when you are, especially when you're mixing light sources, because you want to know, um, and also like older strobes were notoriously like off, like as they got older, like they didn't stay as consistent through their life. That's one thing that bronze color is really good for, especially of all of them, bronze color is the best. Whereas like, if you take a strobe that's like 10 years old and you put it against one that's a bulb, meaning, and you put it against a brand new one, sometimes the color, even with the same brand, will be slightly off. So if you're doing commercial work when, when it was much more, especially on film, where it was much more difficult if you had some weird color cast to fix it, you would actually color meter each of your lights and then you would gel each light to make them all the same, like neutral basically. And then you would add any filtration on top of that that you, that you felt like you wanted to. And sometimes, like when we would get new batches of film, like if you were gonna shoot a catalog, you get like 400 rolls of film. 
and then you would do a test. Like you'd shoot like color targets and stuff, and usually a person or like a, a doll was what a lot of people used. And uh, what you would do is you'd, you'd shoot it with different uh, filtration on the uh, on the camera, uh, you know, on the on the lens too. And then when you uh, process the film, you could see how you liked it best. Like you might be like, oh, this this batch of uh, you know E100s, I want to add, you know, you know, plus two magenta because for whatever reason. I mean, who knows why? And that's you know that's what you do. Oh, dra really? You can drag and drop the preview strip? I, I don't know how you... I don't know. Uh, every once in a while I hit some keyboard shortcut and it makes the, the strip go to the bottom and I can, I, I can never figure out what the shortcut is to put it back. Luckily I use the default setup, so all I have to do is go to default, but it always is like, <laughs> what did I just do there? Mm, yeah, this I don't care for. This I don't care for. All right, that's better. Oh, actually, I'm pretty sure at that moment, and people can maybe remember if you were watching it, I was talking about when you get a light in a good spot, that sometimes if the person moves, you have to move the light too, because just because the light looked good from one direction doesn't mean when they start moving their face, it'll continue to look good. Yeah, that's exactly what this was. And then I went around and I turned and brought the light forward to show that this was better. Um, ah, see, I remember what I was doing. I feel like the saturation's a bit high on these. I'm just gonna drop it a smidge. All right, I dropped the statue like one on this. Uh, I don't care for that one. All right, and then we started messing with the, the rear, light from the rear, which that's the first shot, which probably isn't really very savable. Let me just look, is that sharp? Eh, it's sharp. Let me just grab my, uh, my crappity crap. I was literally just seeing what the light would look like from that position, so I don't know if that's worth saving or not. It's kind of an interesting shot, though, so I think I will save it. Oh, then we started filling in. Eh, I don't really care for that one. This one's better. That's even better. Okay. Yeah, see, now we're coming down to it where it's... We're, we're, we're bouncing some, some fill into the shadow so that we, we have this, like, beautiful contrasty light from the back, but then we also have some detail here. Just a smidge. I think that actually looks pretty darn good. Let me just tweak it a bit, just to see if I care to tweak it. Maybe a tiny bit in the highlights. Bring the mids over. And then drop the blacks. There we go. Yeah, we'll go with that. So again, Command, Shift, C to copy. And then we're just gonna paste the same settings unless the light changes or she moves dramatically. Yeah, so we're bringing the, the fill up, but I still like these settings, because they're really, again, they're not just in the exposure so much as they're just in the contrast. Uh, that I don't really care for as a photo. That I like. That's nice. This I like. Oh, same shot basically with her mouth more open. There we go. She's doing the tilt back there, which I don't normally like, but sometimes it works. Yeah, these are good. Uh, it looks like we got the reflector on the shot here. I'm just gonna crop that. You know, earlier we, I used the, uh, the thing to, to reduce it, but again, I don't care. You know, somebody asked about uh, format. You know, this doesn't need to be three by two, so I can just cut the side off of it off. It's not really a huge deal. It's not like I need to keep it that format. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're doing a little bouncy bounce here. I remember what this was about. Oh, that's kind of cool. Let me sit back for a moment. It's definitely got this like, like warm, smushy feel. Let's add a bit more of the, a bit more contrast. Yeah. Like having that little bit of catch light is just really uh, allowing us to go very dark and still keep... Okay, so now, because I tweaked it so much, the saturation is way high, so I'm just going to drop it a bit. That's a lot of saturation. Okay, good. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. We'll keep that one, why not? Yeah, so then here we, we brought the whole exposure up clearly. Oh. So this I'm gonna want to, I actually think I made it too bright. So I'm gonna bring my blacks in, bring my lights over, keeping that contrast. There we go. 
Mm, not loving the specular highlight on the lower part of her face. To me, that feels unnatural. So get rid of that one. I guess I went back to being, I guess I wasn't liking that, so I went back to being dark again. There we go. Oh, yeah, there it is. Bum, ba -da -ba. Okay, that's too much. So I just pasted the same settings and it was way too much, so I'm gonna start over. So I'm gonna grab my highlights, drag them over a smidge, adjust my mids a smidge to the dark side, and then bring a little bit of black. So, yeah, that looks good. Good. So I'm copying those settings and I'm just gonna paste them on the similar ones until I find one that I don't like. Oh, wow, okay. See here, that looks great. Like I have a feeling if I paste these settings, it's actually, well, I guess it was a pretty minor change. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I like that a lot actually. Yeah, we finally came into it. We've, we came into our own here. We're creating this, uh, I'm not even doing any of these guys. They're pretty much, this one's a little bit bright because our head went back too far. Well, actually, you know what? Let me go. Let's say I love this one. I mean, there's plenty of them. I don't really need it. This feels too bright to me. I might use the high dynamic range here and save that a bit by, by dragging my highlights if I can. I always go back and forth watches to see what it's going to do. Wow. Okay. That's interesting because it's like, yeah, like right there. Oh, yeah, that's good. I like it. That's interesting, the bounce changed slightly. Yeah, that's good. I like it, like it, like it, like it. Not doing anything here, guys. These are just, these I just like. Aha, now we switched up what we were doing again. So let's see if we have anything here that's interesting. Sometimes use the custom color temper chunks of Nikon when you shoot full frame, 50% of the gray light that you use. Oh yeah, you could definitely do that. I mean, shooting a gray card and then seeing uh, how you adjust it is is a different, I, I think I understand what you're saying, you know, why not? And again, I don't think that it's needed a general lighting setup. To me, a color temperature meter is to read individual lights, not to read the entire setup, generally speaking. Can I speak a little bit about what I like or dislike about them? Okay, sure. Let's just randomly pick one. Let's say this one, all right. So, I like the shot a lot. And what do I like about it? And then I'll find something I just like. So I like the way that, so this is, they call this, they, they call this short lighting. I like the way that she's lit from the back. I always find that to be very dramatic um, and adds a lot of contrast and interest. Um, if earlier, like when we were doing that and we were creating like these shots, which are interesting, right? You see it falls off into darkness here, which is fine. But in this, it really helps create a more complete shot because we now have, uh, you know, the hair coming from this side. In addition to that, I went warm with this and cool with this one so that we actually have a little contrast there, which I like a lot. Um, and I think it just adds a lot of flair to it. It almost makes her hair look red. Um, if, if this side of her face was too dark, I would not care for it, which so we did actually add fill. You can actually see it reflecting. I think I brought a beauty edition and just like scooped it in. Um, and yeah, I just, I like the feel of it. I, I like the mood, the feel, it gives three dimensionality. It pretty much has everything that I look for in an image. Um, what I don't like about it, well, if I had to pick something I didn't like, I pretty much like this one. I mean, I, you know, this might be a little more saturated in her hair than I care for, because she kind of looks like a redhead, but although I kind of like that, but if it was for Erica, that might be a bit much. So I might say like one where it's more neutral like this, might make more sense. So I, I think we went a little bit overboard with the color there, but um, yeah, I like it. That's pretty much why I like it. Oh, now I lost where I was though. Where was I? There we go. All right, so this is bad. Oh, well, oh, I can say what. <laughs> you know, uh, hmm. This is bad in so many ways. How bad are you? Let me count the ways. Okay, it's not. 
I mean, forgetting about the color, which I could actually fix. I mean, that's just literally a white balance issue, right? Which even if I did do that though, I think I said the light set about 2600. I mean, it's almost better with the bad color. The light is coming from a terrible angle, okay? We're not seeing enough of her to really understand the shape of her face or nose. Her eye is looking towards me here, but there's no, nothing here for me to attach myself to. So if I was gonna reshoot this exact frame, well, let's say I like this light for some reason, her looking off to where her face is, as opposed to at me, would have made a huge difference. Or even over here, not over here probably, but like straight ahead, would have made a huge difference in this. But really, this is a bad positioning of light. This is a weird shadow. You know, there's nothing about this that's good. We were literally, I think, just trying to frame the light up. So it was just, this was literally just there just to see what would happen. So this is just bad light. This, this is bad light, not even redeemable bad light. You know, moving her makes it slightly better. I think I moved the reflector to get this kind of like, at least this makes sense, but man, it's not flattering at all. And then I think we started messing around with the reflection from the back. And there's, there's like a series of these that have kind of weird lighting, so I'm just trying to get it to where I want it. See here, this was hitting her in just a terrible, terrible way. And there wasn't much I could really do about it uh, and because of the position of the light. Um, we just, because of where the light was, I should say, uh, we just couldn't get it, uh, it how we wanted it. Uh, I think I was shooting it across, like over the top of her head um, and bouncing off a board over here, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And because of that, it kept hitting her. Like there was just no way to avoid it. And it was just bad. So then, you know, I did the thing that people do and went the, and turned it the other way. I mean, you know, that's what you do, right? Um, all right, good. So we're going to, this gets, this is starting to get better, you know? Now this has this kind of blown out feel. She's got, uh, again, she's looking this way with the eyes kind of in the corner, but there's some interest in the eyes. There's some sparkle to it. You know, this, this weird piece of hair right here, it bothers me, but that's something that, I mean, I would normally do this when I'm in my initial edit, but I'll just show you. If I just made a heel layer, I could probably just get rid of that like in two seconds. I did the same thing again. What am I doing wrong here? Heel layer. Oh, I keep doing them. No, it keeps making an adjustment layer. Oh, I see what's wrong. I gotta change it there. Nope. What am I doing here? Capture one. I literally just upgraded this and for some reason it is not. I guess you got to use the 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 the, uh, the bandaid. It used to be used. You used to use the uh, uh, the the brush, but apparently you use the bandaid now. Of course, I did that, and I think the picture's out of focus. Ah, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. Oh, I see what's happening here. Ah, it's not out of focus. It's just kind of soft. I think I, I ended up. Yeah, it's at F4, that's why. I opened up to F4. Yeah, it's fine. I don't hate it. I'm sure there's better. Yeah, like that's better already. Like, we're looking at this, right? And like expression-wise, like here she's a little bit like uh, unsure, and here she's a little more confident. I like a confident Erica, so me, I like that one better. And since I have two of them, I can get rid of the first one. Man, I'm losing my voice today. Yeah, the band did. Man, they changed it. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like the heel is, is different. I'm gonna have to mess around with it. I literally just upgraded. I, I, I always say, I didn't do it because I was about to, to go live and I didn't want to upgrade right before I went live. That's why. <laughs> so they changed the tools. Okay, there we go. That one's fine too. I'm not sure I love that. Get rid of that one. Uh, sometimes too, especially if I have a lot that are the same, I'll just go on a gut instinct. Like either I like the image or I don't, you know. Uh, this I like, this I don't, her head's back too far. 
heads back too far still. This has that same issue, but because her eyes are looking off, and this is actually bad lighting as well, but it's kind of good bad lighting. Like, it's bad lighting that kind of somehow has a mood to it, so I actually like this one. This is better, though, right? So, better, 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 right? A lot of times if you're shooting somebody, shooting a, a portrait of somebody in like kind of a, just a plain background or in a very dark space like this, you know, uh, eye contact can be super important. It'll really change the vibe of the whole thing. So I'm, I'm almost always going to lean towards a, a, an image with eye contact in these situations. That's probably why I'm, if you also see, I'm getting rid of a lot of the ones where she's looking away. Because I'm trying to make contact with the subject, right? We're trying to create a mood here. If somebody is looking away, it really, um, it really can be tricky to connect with them. I mean, sometimes it can work, especially if you're just doing something that's like just truly like just a beautiful shot, or like a beauty shot, basically. Yeah, that's really nice. Just her eyes lit up. She has the arm in there, which isn't normally something I favor, but I think it looks good in that shot. Yeah, those two are both good. Weird hand going on. That's a better hand, but I am not a hand person. But it is almost a Rembrandt lighting, so maybe I should keep it just for that reason. <laughs> Oh, bad hand. Okay, hand, look. Look, my hand is there. The photographer thought that they were a beauty photographer and that hands are needed. Stop putting hands in your picture if you don't need them. Okay, see so how much better that is? Okay, that's her going, stop making fun of people, Daniel. All right, there we go. That's the shoulder forward, right? That's like the, now she's opened up. Boom, these are good. She's staying right in that light. Oh, look at that one. Man, that's good. Whew, that light really made her look good. Oh, is that the last shot? I don't know with the head cut off, though. I might have to uh, have to retouch in the top of somebody's head to make it look like there's a head there. Huh. That's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. If you, speak, if you say that word too many times, that will show up. Yeah, these are good. Like I said, with, with Erica, there's not a whole lot to, well, I say there's not a whole lot to get rid of, but we started off with 121 images and we got 78. I mean, that's pretty decent. You know, I usually get that question, like how many did you give somebody? I mean, in this case, I feel like I would probably give her all of these. I, she's an actress, number one, you know, so she's gonna want, like these subtle differences to her are huge and she'll use them for different things. So for me, unless I'm just like completely opposed to it. Now, there are things like this one, for instance, if I were gonna use this, I would probably, well, let me see if I can do it in Capture One. I normally would do this in Photoshop, but since it's only 417, uh, I'm gonna try to remove this hair. And we can see, let's see if I can do it in Capture One effectively with the heel brush. Uh, it's, it's just giving her like a weird mustache. So I'm just not loving it. So let's just see if we can do this. Does it automatically make a heel layer if I just put the heel tool and do it? Yes, it does. Oh, wow. Okay, that's pretty neat. Now, I didn't set this, so I don't know if it has a little edge grabby thing. Yeah. No, nope. I'm gonna have to set this so that it. Oh man, <laughs> like not using a mouse. Do you guys use like Wacom tablets? I'm really considering getting a tablet. I, I, I tried them many, many years ago, and it just didn't feel right for me. But I feel like that um, it's the kind of thing that might really help for this kind of stuff. No, it's not terrible. Got to get down here a little bit. Oh, wrong way. Just trying to come right up to the edge. You want to cut into her neck. There we go. Yeah, that's not that's not terrible. All in Capture One, all in a raw image. Hey, hey, Capture One, you made the heel brush better. Heel and brush. Very good, so there was that one, and there was one other one I think that had weird hair. This one also has a bit of a weird hair going on, so let's see if we can get this one as well. So again, I'm just using the heel brush. Uh, I'm just zooming in to more than 100% so I can see what I'm doing. And when you hit the Band-Aid here, I'm just gonna paint it in. And of course, it always picks the wrong spot. Oh, well, actually, that's not too bad, but it's still not perfect, but. Oh, 
Huh. That is not terrible. A capture one. We gotcha. We gotcha. If you alt, oh, oh, really? Okay, so just just like Photoshop. Then if you alt, if you alt click before you click on it, yeah. You just have to get used to looking at the screen while drawing. Yeah, exactly. Like you're not looking where you're drawing. I feel like that'd be so difficult for me, and I think that's why I never did it. Yeah, I may have to do it because I, I will say I've been using. Um, uh, more stuff on my iPad. Like I've been doing more drawing and stuff on it and I'm getting used to it now, but it took me a while at first. I was, so that's why I'm thinking that I might, uh... yeah, there's people that just rave about them. That's why, I mean, I, I've actually owned a couple of tablets. Oh, really? Oh, Vanessa Joy just did a video about the new Helenko. Of course she did. Vanessa's so good. She's just on it. Yeah. The one with the screen on it. Yeah, that would be really cool. Huh? Yeah, and that's pretty much what I hear. It takes some getting used to, but it sounds like everybody's down for the tablet. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get one. Trackball? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I think like, wow, it'd be weird to like draw without see, without your hand like in front of you. But at the same time, when I use a mouse, I'm not putting it on my screen, right? I'm putting it, you know, so it's really the same thing. It's just a matter of getting used to it, I guess. The top line is actually running Windows 10. Oh, maybe I can stream from it. Levino 14 inch touchscreen with USB-C. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I guess I'm going to have to invest in one. Coming up to the end of the year, right? At the end of the year, this is when we all have to spend money. It's not the end of the year yet, but I'm making my list of things uh, to uh, to get. All right, I think this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to do one quick over. Uh, it's so funny, though. Like, <laughs> you know, especially on demos. Like, I look at, like, the starting image. Like, it's like, meh. You know what I'm going to try to do? What would happen if I did this? How, how, how well does it do skin? Oh, that's not terrible. That is not terrible. Huh. That blends pretty decently, right? Because the edge of it's right there. I can't see it anymore. There it is. The edge of it's right there. Yeah, that's not a terrible blend. All right, capture one with the with the new healing. Very neat. Huh. Man, I'll tell you, someday, you know, that's my dream to not have to use Photoshop. Not that I use it that much, but when you need it, it's like... Uh-oh, shoot, shoot, I think I'm spinning again. Okay. I think I was down, but now I'm back. Am I back? I don't know if I'm back or not. I think I'm back. Let me refresh the page. Yeah, I'm back, okay. Hopefully I noticed it fast enough that time and I wasn't spending a bunch of time. Uh, if you missed it, I was just seeing what it did on skin tone. And I gotta tell you, it did a pretty decent job. I mean, if you look, like that's a pretty good blend. It's not perfect, but I mean, I also did it really quickly. That's not terrible though, I gotta tell you. There you go, that's pretty good. So let's do one quick uh, go through. 
um, one quick pass through here. So I'm going to select everything. I'm going to hit four stars now, right? I'm turning them all into four stars. And then I'm going to do the, what I like to, I'm going to start naming everything. This is going to be called the rapid edit. So I usually do this after I, um, after I've gone through and I've got like a base, I'm going to look at this now and I'm just going to go on gut instinct. So they're all set at four stars. I'm going to hit three now if I don't love it, right? I don't know what I, I was staring down there for some reason instead of the camera. Um, I'm going to hit three if I don't like it and it's just going to, you know, this, I can always get it back, right? If I, if I end up with only two pictures at the end. So I'm going to put my finger on three, the other finger on my arrow and I'm going to look and I got to tell you, so there's two things here, whether I like it and whether or not I think it's good for the person. So I'm going to say good for the person is more important. I don't love this one though, so I'm going to hit three on this one. So no. I'm oh, I need to set this up here. Three, four, uh, sorry, four stars are better. I got excited to get ahead of myself there. Okay. Okay, this I like. That I like more though. Nope. 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 I'm going back and forth. I think I cut off too much of her head there. I think I was being a wise guy. Uh, no, and no, and no, no, no. These are no, no, no. I'm I'm literally getting rid of all of these because I feel like there's better shots than there are. Like even that one as a plain shot is good. They should get a little better posture. That's kind of the hi. Uh, that's a little flat for me. That's more interesting. No, no, no. Yes, yes. No, mm, no, no. This one I'm torn because I'm not sure I love the shadow one or no. So I'm gonna say no, no. Yes is a flat shot, no. Yes, 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 yes. I like the dark ones clearly, yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, these two are very similar. I think I like clenched on better than open. Too, head too far back, head too far back. That's a little too dark for me. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Mm, there's something off about that one. No. I like her looking off. That's interesting. Yes. 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 Mm. Yes, yes, yes. These are all yeses. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. 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 Even though I just retouched that one, I feel like that's a no now. No. Yes. 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 Definitely yes. Both of those, even though I don't really like the hand. Yes. 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 Again, some of them are similar. Yep. Yep. These are all good. Near the end, I'm going to get more shots that I like, clearly. And that's it. Right? We've now reduced it to 46 images. Right? And if I really wanted to, right, I could go back and say, you know, but if I go three stars or better, I'll come back to my original picks. So if I like, if you did this and then you were like, oh man, that's not enough, you know, you could always go back. All right, so you know what we're gonna do? Let's export these for Erica while we're here. So I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna come over here. And remember, I have this set up. I've done this before. I will actually do it at, at some point during a, a stream. I'll do it again because I, I didn't save it. But this model's Dropbox does two things. It exports the images the size that I want for a model, which is uh, 2,000 pixels, and it makes a Dropbox folder called the name of the session, which in this case is Live Sculpting Light, right? So it's going to make a folder. Normally when I'm shooting a subject, I'll put their name in the, the session name so it's easier, but in this case I didn't do that. I'm going to hit Process, and there we go.